Okay, what, what is this? We have, we have an article from chess.com. Community update on recent events. Okay, okay. But let, me, uh, let me make this a little bit bigger. Give me one second. Um, okay, what do we have? We can make this a little bit bigger. Here we go. This, this is good. All right. And away we go. All right. Okay. Next, next bit of stuff we have to go over. Okay. Community update from chess.com. Um, community update on recent events. We imagine that most of you like us have had more. This is from chess.com. It doesn't say who the author is, to be clear. We imagine like, like, we imagine that most of you like us have had more friends than ever who are outside the chess community come and ask you about chess, cheating, Hans, Magnus, and everything else that is going on. Every news outlet on the planet seems to have written a take on chess in the last few weeks. It's been a bewildering time for chess fans in our community. So as an update to our recent report and the events going on in the chess community, we, okay, so it's Danny and Eric, wanted to take the time and answer some of the questions we see being asked. We appreciate your voice and your questions. And while we know that the opinions in the chess community are divided on many of these topics, we are doing our best to protect and grow the game. Okay. First question. Why are you addressing all this now and so publicly? Why didn't you address these topics before? On September 5th, 2022, Magnus publicly withdrew from the Singfield Cup following his game with Hans Niemann. For better or worse, this action sparked a public controversy in the chess world and beyond. As we explain in greater detail in our report, we were faced with a binary decision with little time to make that decision. Could we ensure the integrity of the CGC for all participants in the event under the circumstances and with the information we had at the time? We believe the answer was no, and so we subsequently uninvited Hans. While we reached out to Hans privately and intended to keep the matter confidential, as has historically been our practice for fair play matters, Hans decided to make it a matter of public interest during his post-game interview after round four of the Sinkfold Cup, and we felt we needed to respond publicly to correct the record. So, as I said before, um, again, I think it's very clear that what happened in the case... Delugi, I'm not, I actually don't really know what's going on there, but in the case of Hans, this seems to confirm that when Hans spoke out and lied about how much he had cheated, it basically cleared, uh, not clear, but basically chess.com no longer had to abide by NDA or legal agreements, whatever they had with Hans, because he lied about it. So that, that meant he violated it, which means they're, they're able to just spill all the beans. And I think, I think this very clearly says that between the lines. Okay. Would you have uninvited Hans if any other player had withdrawn? Ooh, this is a good question. We believe that had any other top 10 or even top 50 player in the world made such a bold statement by withdrawing from an elite tournament in the matter in the manner Magnus did, and if we had been faced with the same question of both, number one, what we anticipated the coming fallout to be, and two, whether we could indeed promise ourselves top players and our fans, the CGC was ready to deal with this level of public speculation regarding cheating, we would have had the same doubts and made the same decision. The bottom line is that we did not feel capable of ensuring our biggest event ever would be played cleanly, given the now new levels of suspicion regarding the Grandmaster what grandmasters at the top level felt each other were capable of. Um, okay, so, I mean, I, 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 I think what they're saying here, objectively, is true that if someone had done, that, done this, they would have probably made the same decision. On the other hand, I think there's a 0% chance that any other player in the entire world could have done what Magnus did. I don't think there's any other player who could have done what he did um, without basically ruining their entire career. So... Um, so, so that's the problem. That's the problem with the statements that yes, if a player could do it, I think they would have reacted the same way, but no player except Magus could have done it. So it's kind of, kind of irrelevant in a sense as, as an actual, um, as an actual question. Okay. What's next? Do you regret uninviting Hans from the CGC? Would you have done that without Magnus calling him out? Hindsight is 2020, so it's impossible to say with certainty how things would have happened if Magus had not withdrawn from the Singfield Cup, or if we had not uninvited Hans from the CGC. Magnus did not directly call Hans out at the time, but Magnus's public withdrawal created certain inferences and further speculation regarding Hans, which obviously contributed to our actions. With that said, just as we stated above, that we would have likely taken the same course of action we did had it been any other top player withdrawing the way Magnus did. It is also likely that we would not have uninvited Hans from the CGC had the current world chess champion or any other world elite chess player not withdrawn from the Singfield Cup in that way. So, okay, fair enough. Okay. Why did you release the Hans Niemann report when you did right before his next major chess tournament? The chess calendar of over the board and online events is back-to-back s'mores of chess. And while this is awesome for fans, it is hard for players and organizers. 
Just as our removal of Hans from the CGC was awkwardly timed, but necessary due to the tough conversation that was being forced onto the chess world and the need to ensure the integrity of the CGC for all participants, we didn't feel that our report could wait many weeks for a more potential for a potentially more convenient opening. Okay. Um also very true. I, I I think I've said this before. I think I don't know if it's actually a good thing that there, there are too many chess events going on now. Um because for example, I'll give you guys uh, something that happened this morning like I agreed to play a Norway chess now this is a tournament that's happening in May of next year and already we're only in October we're seven months out uh, from the event and they were already asking me this morning to more or less confirm that I'm going to play seven months before the event happens um so this is definitely a very legitimate legitimate point um now my read of the situation is that in terms of releasing the report they probably felt an, a responsibility to push it out as fast as they could before before the U.S. championship began because the, the problem is if you don't push something out before you oh you almost certainly can't do it during the middle of the tournament um and if you do it afterwards already every like this the speculation is only going to grow if there's no report like everybody already knew they were they said they said they were going to release something so everybody already knew this but then you're in a situation where you know that they're going to release something but if nothing is released before the actual um before the actual event everyone's even more uncertain about what's what's going on so uh, that's that's my read. I confirmed that I will be playing. Yes, I, I did confirm. The point that I'm making is I think there are actually just too many chess tournaments going on, um, and I don't think I don't think it's it's a good thing objectively uh, overall. So let's keep going through through this. You see, have you considered whether Chess.com's leniency in the past has contributed to some of the current attitudes towards cheating in online chess? We understand that there are different views on how we and the chess world generally should handle players who have cheated. Some of the community wish to see those who have admitted cheating and or whom we have determined are likely to have cheated in games be punished more severely or handled differently than we have historically. We have always tried to see the best in everyone and everyone and believe that everyone can have a redemption story, which is why we have privately given those who have cheated at least one chance to own up to their actions and start afresh. At the same time, we hear the criticisms regarding our historical approach and recognize that a different approach may be better moving forward, including potentially handling instances of cheating in the future more publicly rather than discreetly. We are always seeking to improve the game and our role in it, and we are currently evaluating our practices and intend to propose changes to our approach. Stay tuned. All right, so I think this is very important to note. Um, when we when we when we look at this about the online attitudes, I think I, I think I said before, uh, my my read of the situation is why we got to the stage we got to with all the rumors, all the speculation is because chess.com did not um did not make this public when they probably should have. Um after Hans was caught for like the third, I think it was it the third time? I mean, maybe it's like events uh, or it's periods of times, but after he had been caught more than two times shooting, more than like that one set of blitz, like one set of title twos and then a blitz match, once it was beyond that, I think chess.com probably they should have had some mechanism to go public with it because i think the fact they weren't able to is what led to all the speculation everyone knew that he had cheated online they were nearly certain of it um based on the accounts and the closures and and whatnot um and so 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 when you look at the when you when you look at um when, when you look at it basically i think chess.com they're gonna have to do something differently where they can go public like a strike rule uh or something of that nature the thing though that also is puzzling about the whole situation is why was Hans given so many chances? I, I mean, you hear about like Delugi getting what three chances, but it feels like Hans is given like seven chances or something. Um, when you when you look at the when you look at the matches, the tournaments, it feels like he was given a bunch of chances, um, and that's what I actually don't understand is why he was this one. He was the one person who was like because he was a kid. I mean, maybe that's true. Maybe it's because he was he, he wasn't an adult. But that is the one thing that uh, that does puzzle me. Um, is why was Hans given all these opportunities? Um, as opposed to saying like two strikes, you're done. That's it. End of story. Um, but it is what it is. Um, do you think younger players should be given more chances or are the rules the same regardless of age? I think they're going to have to make the rules basically the, 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 um, the same. I think they're going to have to make the rule. They're going to have to make it the same. That, that, that's, that's what it has to be. All right. Next up we have, did chess.com leak the list of names tweeted by the fake GM Hans Neiman account on Twitter on October 6, 2022? No, this was not a leak from chess.com, nor is that list accurate. There are many players on the list who had been closed for fair play violations, and there are other players who have been closed who are not on the list. We have spoken to everyone on our team and feel confident that none of them have done this, nor would they. And we believe that the, the person who posted this was doing this through their own inaccurate process of looking at account activity. Okay. 
Are you going to share any more names of those who have cheated in the past? We do not currently plan to share the names or confirm any rumors of any more individuals who have cheated or we believe have cheated in the past unless it becomes a material public issue. As discussed in our report, our historical practice, though not required, has been to handle such matters discreetly and to give those who have cheated on our site and admitted to cheating at least one, one uh, cheating at least one chance to redeem themselves. All right, makes sense. Okay. While we understand that the recent public controversies could suggest to people that someone who cheats will always cheat again, we do not share this opinion and feel we have a strong track record with many title players who cheated once, confessed, and returned to have never cheated again on our site. While we don't believe a first-time offense is ever okay, we also maintain that people make mistakes and that there are more examples of people self-correcting than repeatedly cheating. So the way that I read this also is, is very, very clear-cut, which is to me it sounds like Probably, probably people think, okay, well, you know, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play like Title Tuesday. I'm gonna use my phone or whatever elaborate setup they have, and it's just like, okay, they, they surely can't catch me. Like, it's just not possible. And then all like all the all the metadata and everything else happens. And they're like, oh man, like Chess.com, as as Hans himself would say, they have the best cheating and the, they have the best cheat detection in the world. And so probably think like, okay, like whatever. And they're like, oh, there's like, oh, oh shit. Basically, they are legitimately amazing at catching it. Um, and, and and so that's that's sort of the thing is it feels like most people do that and that's it whereas for hans it was the exact opposite like okay i'm going to try to do it again is what it sounded sounds like happened so hans definitely is i mean i guess the uh what is the, what is the word he's an outlier the exception to the to the traditional rule um is is what it sounds like all right next up what do we have then why did you create a public report on hans we only created a public report on hans because hans made this a public issue with his comments and we felt forced to correct the public record up until that point, Hans made his comments. Up until the point Hans made his comments, chess.com handled the matter discreetly and planned to continue handling it directly with Hans only. We felt compelled to com complete as full and detailed an investigation as we could on a condensed timeline and to give the community and the public at large a detailed report of our findings regarding the controversy, including the game with Magnus, Hans's past on chess.com, and Hans's OTB rise, and insight into chess.com's best in class cheat detection system. Okay. Um, why did you not close Hans's account earlier when you knew he cheated? Why did you let this get to 100 or so games mentioned in your report? Also very good. Chess.com is founded by people who love chess and by people who love people. We, Danny and Eric, feel a deep sense of compassion for all humans. We have four kids each, and we have seen the process of having children grow up and learn and improve through their mistakes. This makes us want the best for everyone and makes us believe that everyone can have a redemption story. For Hans, at first we felt like we didn't have enough data to conclusively determine that he was likely cheating, especially given his age, and that we often lean ever more, we, we often lean ever more conservative in our findings when it comes to young players. After some time in 2020, we believed we had gathered enough to make the determination we did that Hans had and still was violating fair play rules regularly. It's possible that we could have made a determination before then, but we had high hopes for Hans's future as we do with all junior players. And we're really hoping that, that we and the data we had up to that point was wrong, or were wrong, sorry. So basically, the, the simple, simple answer is that as we look at it, you have, you have this anomaly of somebody who cheated and continued to cheat in Hans Neiman, unlike it seems like almost everybody else. And so he is the anomaly, he is the person who felt the need to keep trying to, to, to get past the system over and over and over again. Whereas with most people, it seems like it was like one time thing. Oh man, they've got amazing detection. Not, not even, not even going to test their test it more than once. And then for whatever reason, they felt like Hans deserved extra chances. Maybe it's, you know, his family situation. Maybe it's the age. You don't really know. Um, but it's also more or less confirms what we, what we already suspected, which is that basically Danny and Eric were simply too compassionate when it came to Hans for whatever reason, maybe it's the kid, Whatever, however it goes. Um, so as I said before, I think that's very clearly the case as, as it's laid out here too. Uh, fool me once, fool me 113 times, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Um, so as you see, this is why in the world you cannot have good things at the end of the day. Good things are not allowed because when you try to be good people, you try to do things right, all it takes is one person to basically mess up everything. Like as, as I read through more and more of like their, their anti-cheat or their cheat detection and the way that they're processed, like the strike at the second account, I actually think it's pretty pretty good system but it just takes one person to, to ruin everything. That's all it takes. And that one person was Hans. Okay. Um, why do you use the word likely cheated in your report? Are you not confident in your findings? 
Um, yeah, lawyer. Yeah, lawyers. Why do we have to use the word likely? Joking aside, we have aimed to be very precise in what we say. And while we can certainly say things like likely and most likely based on statistical probabilities and other circumstantial evidence that gives us confidence that something is likely or very likely true, we cannot ever say something is certain or 100% true absent direct evidence like a confession. In the world of statistics, even something that is considered 99.99% .99 sure is called likely. Okay. Also fair enough. Um, and, and also to, to use another point, like I saw there's the poker cheating scandal still going on, I think. And when, when Garrett Adelstein, Adelstein put out his, his statement, he said he thought, you know, it was quote unquote, most likely that Robbie Jade Lou cheated. So obviously lawyers are telling everybody that you don't say, you don't just say they did this, they did that. It's like most likely or likely uh, legalese, legalese. It's great stuff. Great stuff. Okay. Um, does... Uh, does chess.com think Hans cheated in his game with Magus? And does chess.com believe he's cheated in any OTB games? Okay. Uh, but the, the, the thing about this is like, this is them coming up with the questions, right? There's not an outside journalist doing this. So they're coming up with the questions. Um, so, okay. In our report, we share our in-depth analysis of the statistical and circumstantial evidence surrounding the Magus versus Hans game and regarding Hans' over-the-board play more generally. The takeaway from our investigation is that while it is noteworthy that Hans is the fastest improving player in modern chess history, and many of the events surrounding Hans' game with Magus are unusual, but see, this. so I'm really perplexed by this because I, I'm honestly perplexed. They, they basically say, again, they're saying, they're saying he didn't cheat, but they're saying there still are like actual anomalies with the Magnus game, which nobody else really felt, I thought, at the time. Like, or maybe people still don't feel that way. So it's very peculiar um, when you look when you look at this wording, for sure. Because it's like, no, he, he it's like, um, what is it? It's like saying, I mean, I'll give you, it's like if I say today, I say, you, you know what, you guys? I just bought 100,000 shares of Amazon. Or no, sorry, I say, you know, you, you guys, like, what, what do I say? Um, no, no, it's not, it's the other way. It's like I say, I don't know, I, I don't know, I, I don't, I, I don't know where Amazon is, is it, what, how do I word it? I was trying to give an, I give a stock example. Um... But I, I'm too stupid to figure it out right now. So let's get back to the article. I was, gonna, I was basically going to say it's something like you say something, um, you, you say something, and, and then like you pretend it's not true, even though you have a very obvious, uh, you have very obvious uh, financial position in it. Try Apple. Okay, yeah. Uh, but anyway, whatever. Let's, I think you guys get what I'm trying to say. It's like, you know, yeah. It's like, I, I have a position in Amazon, but you know, that, that doesn't matter at all. I just, I know the stock is going to 140. Like it's going to 140 in three months. Like I know it's going there, but it doesn't, not, not, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that, that I have this position. Anyway, okay, here we go. Um, <laughs> and to be clear, I don't have a position. All right, so back to the article. Um, okay, back to the article. Okay, uh, um, where, where were we? Uh, the events surrounding Hans' games with Magus are unusual. The statistical evidence regarding Hans' over the board games does not necessarily suggest cheating, and we did not find any direct evidence that Hans has cheated in any known over the board games. We also found no evidence to support any of the wild conspiracy theories, such as beads that have circulated online, thanks to Elon Musk, and we really discourage the continued airing of any such conspiracies. As far as we are concerned, and with this disclaimer, that detecting and preventing OTB cheating is not chess.com's expertise, Hans is innocent until proven guilty. Both in his games, both in his game with Magus and his OTB play more generally. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Why didn't you just invite Hans and not close his entire account? Fair enough. Or wait, no, sorry. It says, um, why did you sorry, why did you include the videos of Magnus losing to different players? Okay, our goal with the report was to share as much as we could about our exploration of what happened, including not just statistics, but also reactions. Human emotion, especially in tense or exciting moments, can tell a lot about a person, and it was something we looked at. Ultimately, it didn't reveal anything specific or particularly noteworthy, but it was included to show different elements of our investigation. Okay, fair enough. Why didn't you just uninvite Hans and not close his entire account? We recognized that we could have closed and we could have chosen to keep Hans' chess.com account open while at the same time uninviting him from the CGC. But given the concerns we had related to integrity at the time, we thought it would be inconsistent and confusing to allow Hans to play in other prize money events. We hold so many each week but not the CGC. That said, and as we've communicated, Hans' account closure is not necessarily permanent, and we invite Hans to have a private discussion with us to discuss the status of his account. Okay, fair enough. What, what do you think of Hans now? Hans Neiman is a talented rising player and likely a future chess star. We can understand, though, 
Why some of the chess community might be suspicious given Hans' past in online chess, his meteoric rise, and some of his incredibly strong OTB performances. However, we are unaware of any direct evidence of over the board cheating. FIDE governs the over the board space, and we trust that they will handle the situation in the best way possible. FIDE governs the over the board space, and we trust. Oh, sorry. We, we want the best for Hans as a person and as a player, and hope he has a support around him that he needs moving forward. All right. Is there a path back to chess.com for Hans? We have already reached out to Hans to offer a potential path back. This would include a full, honest discussion of the past and a commitment to mutually trustworthy terms in the future. We are ready to have that conversation anytime. All right. Can you tell us any more about the 2,700 plus rated players who chess.com caught cheating who is mentioned in the report? We use this player as an example to show the process and confidence we have in our cheat detection protocols. We do not plan... Uh, we do not plan to publicly identify or release any further information regarding this player. Okay, fair enough. Now, of course, it gets to an important point. Like, obviously, they're, they're sort of dictating the questions. This isn't like a, a journalist. Um, but they say, why did you publish the emails about, about GM Maxime Delugi? When Magnus mentioned Maxime Delugi in one of his post-game interviews, within hours, the entire world was talking and speculating about Maxime. Streamers, bloggers, and podcasters were asking questions, and multiple news agencies were emailing us directly asking for clarification. There, there were calls from all around the world, both within the chess community and outside it, for chess.com to be transparent about what was already an already open, what was already an open secret online that Maxime had allegedly been removed from chess.com for cheating. Given that the issue had already been made public, and in order to be fully transparent with the community, we released several emails with Maxime about his status on chess.com while redacting his personal information. The release of emails was fully consistent with our legal rights and our terms of service. Okay, so they're saying that basically when the public, when the media started asking all these questions, and there's all the speculation, they, um, they, they were able to because of their, their TOS. As we know, TOS is ironclad, nothing you can do about it. Okay. What do you think of Maxime Delugi? Maxime is a well-credentialed chess coach in New York who, as made clear in recent reporting by Vice, admitted to cheating in some online games on chess.com a few years ago. Maxime committed not to cheat again. Maxime is an incredibly strong player and tremendous trainer who has contributed a lot to the chess community, and we do not believe his actions in online games in the past should detract from who he is as a coach or his many contributions to the chess community through the years. Okay. All right, a little bit, little bit more. Let's see, is there anything interesting? Um, what do we have? We have, do you have any comments on Joachim Berger Nielsen and his admission to having cheated in the Pro Chess League in the past? This is actually a fascinating case that has recently been made public. We went back and looked at our notes about his play, and you can learn more about that here. Fair enough. Okay, how's that chess empire doing? Yeah, the chess empire, you guys. I'm, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm like Prince Charles. You know, at the end of the day, like, you know, Prince Charles was waiting for so long to finally get his inheritance to rule the world. So I'm, you know, I'm actually like Prince Charles. I'm, I'm just waiting until, until my time comes to, ru to rule, rule the chess world, and have my chess empire, and, and just uh, tower over everybody else. Okay. Next up, we have, um, why can't you be more aggressive in closing accounts? Closing a title player's account for cheating is a big deal. We have always tried to find the right balance between protecting the game and being fair to the player. Historically, we have closed accounts only when we have overwhelming evidence of cheating. We know this allows some players to cheat for longer than if we close their accounts earlier with less certainty, but at the same time, we have never wanted to be wrong. Important point to note. When it comes to title players, we don't want to be wrong one out of 100 times, which would be 1% or even one out of 1,000, which I think is what, 0.1%. We have thousands of title players on our site, and that would mean potentially and unfairly closing the accounts of many innocent players. We never want to be wrong, and so we have tried to be as cautious as possible. We are now open to re-examining our policies and exploring new and different ideas for how to strike the proper balance. Okay. Um, why do you think Magnus withdrew from the Singfield Cup and later resigned on move one in his game? Magnus did not consult with us before withdrawing from the Singfield Cup or resigning versus Hans, and we did not tell him to do so. We don't speak for Magnus and cannot answer questions about his actions or thinking. Like others in the chess community, we hope that Magnus will soon say more to share his side of the story. Okay. Do you think Magnus did the right thing in withdrawing and then later resigning in his game against Hans? It isn't our place to judge if Magnus's actions were right or wrong. Those were his decisions alone. That said, what Magnus has done has brought to the forefront an important conversation about cheating in chess, and we do believe that his motives were for the good of the game. We and the rest of the community are engaged in the conversation, 
and we believe that chess as a whole, both online and OTB, can only be better off discussing and attempting to find the best solution for these issues. Okay. Um, does this controversy impact your potential deal with Play Magnus Group? Not at all. Play Magnus and Chess.com are still entirely separate companies. The recent events surrounding cheating in chess have nothing to do with our potential acquisition of Play Magnus, and the timelines are coincidental. We had no influence on Magnus's withdrawal from the Sinkfield Cup, and neither Magnus nor Play Magnus Group had any input into or advanced knowledge of our decisions regarding Hans's removal from our site and our rescinding his invitation to the CGC. Okay. Again, as I've said, this, this deal is still not closed, by the way, between Chess.com and Play Magnus, and... I think it says a lot that people talk about it being like some kind of conflict of interest or controversy. If I was chess.com right now, I honestly would be like, you know, Magnus is just like really, he's really caused a ruckus. Everything is very like unsettled right now. And if I was chess.com, like they, they, they should almost just say, nah, we don't, we don't want to do the deal. We're going to walk away from it. Um, because the value that they give, a lot of it is the perceived value of Magnus as the world champion, the reputation he has. So I, I kind of do actually think that it is worth, um, worth noting that uh, they're still trying to go through with it even after magnus has really um mucked up or ch chummed the waters i guess is the right word chummed the waters um and and so we'll see at any rate is cheating online versus otb different opinions about how serious cheating online is versus otb are varied we also acknowledge that some have viewed cheating online as less serious because online just started in casual way among uh, anonymous players where no money was involved and where there was hardly any cheating detection However, much has changed over the years to drastically increase increase the stakes of um, increase the stakes of online chess. And Chess.com has fought every step of the way during the time period to protect that investment. We have always believed that cheating against another person in a game, regardless of whether it is online or over the board, robs that person of a fair experience. And where prize money events are involved, whether it's an online or an OTB tournament, cheating may harm players even more. We believe that there should be zero tolerance for cheating in chess in any venue or format. Also, I completely agree with this too. Um, like, if Magnus was a businessman, he would have not cared about losing to Hans. Probably true. Um, so, so yeah, like this, I, I think this is worth noting. My attitude towards the whole general thing is like, you know, if it's generally like this one-time thing, like that's that. But you know, the fact that with Hans it occurred in many tournaments and you're taking money away from other professionals, I feel like I feel like it's it's as serious as over the board, even if there's some who feel it isn't. Okay, um, how much cheating is there really on chess.com? We have more than 20 million monthly active members. You can see how many accounts we close for cheating here. We believe that our prize events are largely, largely shielded from cheating, that very little cheating does take place, and that when it does, we generally catch it. We unfortunately do still close several title players' accounts each month due to cheating in title Tuesday events, mostly the accounts of FMs and below, but we try our best to catch any unfair play before the cheating can undermine the event. Now, this, of course, is something that I strongly disagree with, and I think chess.com for years has not actually addressed adequately, um, which is that they have never figured out a way to sort of redo results or reset tournaments from certain points in time. Um, and the reason I say this is because I think I said something to them probably like already like six or seven years ago about this, where like if someone cheats in one game, it's not about the fact that you stop them from cheating all the way to the end where they can win the event. It's that the person who they cheat against, it ruins their event. That is the big problem um, that I still find is that they say this, but again, if someone is able to cheat in one game, and you can't reset that game. That person who was cheated against, their tournament is ruined. Um, all right, so let's keep going. Um, uh, we also want to affirm that we believe that speed chess championships, rapid chess championship, and global chess championship are free from cheating, with the exception of qualifiers, where we did encounter some cheating. <sighs> oh, no. So what they're saying is that they're, I mean, I guess they, they don't specify. Well, they do specify the tournaments, right? They're saying that in the qualifiers, for like, I'll just use the rapid chess championship or the global chess championship, maybe global is open. But I'll use the RCC. That means that people, RCC was open only to grandmasters, and that means that grandmasters have cheated in the qualifier for the RCC. That is very disheartening to hear, actually. Very, very disheartening. Um, oh man, that's uh, I, that kind of makes me sad. Um, like global and speech chess championship, it's open. IMs, FMs can play, but the RCC is closed. It is only for GMs. It was like 40, 50 players, and it's only GMs. Um. That is very sad. RCC was only GMs, I believe. Um, the, the qualifiers. Anyway, all right. Okay. 
um are free from cheating with the exception of qualifiers where we did encounter some cheating we have also signaled to the community that we are not afraid to protect protect chess no matter what notably after the 2020 pro chess league finals despite how it could have been perceived by the community we permanently ban a notable notable top grandmaster and overturn the overturn the results of the event regardless of any pp in any pampers <laughs> okay I, I mean this i i was actually about to make that joke until they put it at the end of this uh at the end of this comment but yeah um that's that's pretty funny that that that's actually pretty that's that's some good humor in here um all right are you going to share names of people who are caught cheating in the future we recognize that we may need to reevaluate our approach on how best to handle situations where we have evidence that a player and in particular a title player has been cheating we hope to meet with representatives of the broader chess community and leaders of other gaming sporting bodies to discuss best practices we believe that greater transparency and accountability can help discourage online cheating. We hope to share more specific plans in the near future after a full assessment. Okay. Is cheating going to ruin chess? Cheating both over the board and online is a major concern and something that all organizers need to take seriously. Industry-wide best practices and policies need to be established. And as a major online platform, we look forward to working to find the best path forward that is respectful to players and the game. For online events, chess.com uses myriad methods for both preventing and catching cheating, and we will continue pushing for improvements in both areas. For OTB, we believe that cheating can be prevented through increased security measures by organizers, a deeper investment in OTB classical statistical models, and cross-organizational transparency and cooperation. So basically, by, by cross-organizational, they're referring to like what happened after like 9-11 when you had all the government agencies like the CIA, the FBI, NSA. I think there was much more sharing of data. So in this case, it's going to be like, uh, it's going to be between chess.com, Lee Chess, FIDE, and, and whatever other bodies there are. In the end, will all of this be good or bad for chess? That remains to be seen and depends on how the chess world reacts, but we think the current controversy and the discussion surrounding it provides an opportunity for positive change in the attitudes and behaviors of all chess players. We think the future is bright and we look forward to doing everything we can for this great game we all love. Okay, we will share more concrete next steps with the community as we move forward and to help protect and promote the game we love. Thank you for being a part of this amazing, dynamic, and exciting community, Danny and Eric. All right, so very, very long article. Um, I mean, they're basically laying out everything. I assume that also part of why they're putting this all out is specifically because if um, if uh, if Dilugi or say Hans, for example, are looking to sue chess.com, everything is now out there as like public statements and what's going on. And this this will obviously, you know, it's, it's what it is. So I think there's probably some legalese aspect to this as well. But I mean, overall, I think it's good. I don't, I don't know if I like parts of this though. Like overall, it's good. The, the Dilugi stuff is a little bit odd to me though in that like they talk about how they're not naming anybody else um so it's like you know if they're not naming anybody else if, if but like you know if somebody if somebody is accused of cheating and they come out and deny it but they have that, that just means they're gonna leak they're gonna leak it again or what's I, I mean I don't I don't know it's uh it that that part seems a little bit murky but overall I think it's a it's a pretty good article so all right what do we have next or actually I'm gonna go use the restroom quickly and then we're gonna keep going with our content um so just give me one second 